We've got a Patreon trial right now where you can do a trial sign up for seven days. So if you're fucking loving this podcast and you want more of it, yeah. sign up right now for seven days. See what it's like to be a Patreon. If you hate it, you can cancel. If you forget to delete your card details, we can get your money. <laughs> yeah. Try it out. Just try it out. The year is with Red and Bobby. Welcome to the Year Is Podcast. The podcast where every episode we travel back to a year in history. We talk about the weirdest, the most interesting, the strangest things from that year. I am wearing the worst shirt I own. <laughs> I think it's all right. What did you say? Miami Cruise. <laughs> yes. I haven't. I am in need of new clothing and I just have put it off for five years. You know what will go with that shirt? Is a bum bag and then a cap with like a little shark on the yeah, cap. Yeah, and a vacation in the 1990s. Oh my it's... God. By the way, sharks. Uh, uh, what? Another <laughs> shark fact? No, have you not seen the last week? What happened? So there was a kid who jumped off the um, cruise ship in the Bahamas. Have you seen that, Johnny? I've not, no. No. He jumped off the side of the boat as like a prank dare from his mates. He was 18. He was celebrating great. Into time. the ocean. Into the ocean. And they film him and everyone is, he's never been seen again. Everyone assumed he just drowned or floated away. And in the film, you slow it down, you see a shark coming, and he sort of punches down and then basically disappears. So he was eaten by a shark. And then um, a Russian guy, 24 years old, on holiday in Egypt, um, eaten, filmed. This is on people putting this on Twitter. So it's just like you're just scrolling through Twitter, and I just saw this video. I'm like, oh, what's going on here? And suddenly it's a fucking shark attack being filmed. If you are eaten by a shark and that's how you die, Mm. it's going to be like kind Mm. of poetic. Why? Because you. Oh, me. Oh, yeah. No, it won't. Because you think of sharks every day. They just justify every paranoia and neurosis I have. While you're dying. You're just like, I was right. (laughs) I told Ah. you. So bad. There's someone just filming him with his phone out, just filming the attack, not, not wading in to help. And the one in Egypt, is he... In Egypt. Does he punch dead. it? He's trying to, but it's horrible. The shark, like, takes him under. And then, um, and you don't see him again. And this woman just goes, oh, my God, that shark's eating his remains. <laughs> like, Thanks for that, he lady. Was in the video. Yes, in the but video. But it's like, to just go from it being a him to his remains. Yeah, 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 yeah. Really bad. Not good at all. Um, Twice in the last week. Shark lovers will convince you that they didn't know they were attacking humans, but I don't think sharks care. So there we have it. I think you should do a podcast with a <laughs> shark expert. Yeah. And every week the shark expert will talk about how actually we're killing way more sharks than but sharks But that doesn't matter. Us. No. No. You forget. You, the thing is, you don't, you don't actually think about climate change. All you think about is man versus yes. shark. We're here to survive. Yes. Climate change. Uh, you're referring to the climate hoax. <laughs> I'm, I'm kidding. New York. The ice is... caps are melting. Hear about that lady in New York who was uh, trying to trying to do a Broadway show, but then she started coughing because of the smog from forest fires. Yeah, yeah that was nothing... Jodie Coma. Jodie, Jodie Coma. Coma. But that was a cigarette. No, it wasn't a cigarette. <laughs> it was a cigarette. <laughs> Red. Red Canada's on fire. Yeah, and it's it's making the entire North stop, American continent. You can't stop bunning fat ones in the forest. Um, <laughs> what do you think it was then? It, it, the, the the ground got so hot. No, it was it was yes. Mm. Yeah, yeah. When it gets really hot and dry, forest fires Look, are much more likely. There's two sides to every story, and <laughs> <laughs> I have it on evidence that Jody was out there last week smoking cigarettes. No, this in is the Jody woods. Comer. That was the the actor's name. It's so a, he be collapsed in, another in, in, on Jody. Broadway. Huh? On Broadway. She. She. Jody. The girl's name. Do you know that, Jody? You got a girl's name. No, no one's ever confused me with Really? Well, what was it like on the playground? Did anyone say that? There's a girl's way. Name? There's so many other things before his name. <laughs> they wouldn't have even. It would have taken like 20 years of like, oh, yeah, and you have a girl's name. <laughs> so Jody's bully lying in bed last year. He goes, why didn't I bring that <laughs> yeah, up? Yeah, 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 yeah. He, he sends Jody an Instagram message. He's like, hey, man, I just wanted to really apologize. I never bullied you for having yeah. a girl's name. But I feel like I feel like I should have to prepare you yeah. for the rest of your life. <laughs> No, people adapted 
pretty quickly. It's just usually in formal situations when people phone me and expect a woman to pick up. So yeah. it's just like, and they bah. get quite the shock. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But the the one time it benefited me was in college when I was looking for shared accommodation in my first year because, yeah, I couldn't get into halls and because oh, of- you catfished a load of men. No, no. I I just put my name down for or shared accommodation. I just put my yeah, put my Charlie! name down. Oh, I put my name down for shared accommodation sneak. and so many all girls houses called me asking me if I wanted to move in. And did you say yes? I of course I said yes, but um then they, they weren't too up for it. Yeah. Well, I did eventually <laughs> live with two girls, so I guess it, the Fair catfishing enough. worked. Yeah. Good good for you. Yeah. I was like, watching Michael Olawale the other day. He's a great comic comedian. He was uh, he did a joke, but I, he was, I think it's I don't know if it's real, but he talked about um some kid in his class who was racist. Okay. And the kid reached out and said, "Sorry, I was racist to you in science class." And Michael says, "Ah, oh, cheers, but uh, you got the wrong black guy." <laughs> 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 Which I didn't ask him if it's true. I hope it is. <laughs> <laughs> So where did you end up, Jody? Did you go into an all men's dorm? No, I went and moved into a flat with two girls. No, really? Friends yeah. to this day? No, never spoke to them again Ooh. after the first year when I lived with them. Did yeah. it end badly? I don't think it, end, it just didn't start. I think mm. it wasn't kind of... I, I had that in my halls. I didn't speak. I spoke. There was one guy called Paul and we talked. The rest of the people did not speak to the whole year. Literally not at all. I had a couple of people I spoke to. My roommate in college was a guy named Skinny. Mm. Uh, that was his nickname because was although I was skinnier than him. No. Mm. And he was like one of these kind of like at the time you would have said school shooter vibe, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know, like just a, a, a loose cannon kind of guy that wanted to join the army, but couldn't get in because yeah, he failed yeah, yeah. a couple of the tests mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and, and um, then started blaming Jewish people. And one, <laughs> what, I remember one night. There was a, uh, they were, they were doing a prank where Skinny was really drunk and he had passed out. So they're going to like shave his eyebrow, you know, mm, mm, mm. and I wasn't really involved. I, I didn't hang out with the guys on my floor. I was hanging out with comedians by that point, but, uh, I was around and, uh, I came back a couple hours later and apparently what happened was they had, they had, they had went for Skinny once like to shave his eyebrow and they, they came back to do it again. And he was lying in bed while holding like a hunting knife just waiting for them to come back. And when they tried to shave his eyebrow, he just like put the knife to their throat. Oh my God. What's Skinny up to now? Don't know. Didn't stay in touch. Smoking cigarettes in the forest in Canada. Yes. Possibly. Yeah, I remember the first night I was there. Actually, there was this lady who we got on well. Like we sort of had a polite chat. And then I went to the kitchen to make some food. I hadn't bought cutlery yet, and I just assumed that the cutlery was just complimentary. <laughs> that is you, though, right? Yeah, and I so I made <laughs> I made food. I think I, I can't remember if Classic I washed up and red. I got back the next day. She knocked on my door, and she was like, never use my cutlery again. And I just, for some reason, just went, I didn't. <laughs> and it was only me and her in the flat, and I just went, I didn't. And we never spoke again. But um, my mate added her on Facebook, and she accepted, and... He, we went through her posts one night and there was like 20 posts about how much he fucking hated her flatmate and that was me. Because <laughs> he lo- used a cutlery. He used a cutlery. I think I always came in late and just like door slamming and stuff like that. You are a door slammer though. Phil Ellis is a... Uh, I've heard through other sources. through Phil Ellis, but he's got, uh, he's got door trauma. I, don't, yeah. I came back from in Edinburgh one night and it was like three in the morning and I was listening to music so i just didn't realize how loud i was being and you know when you like go to one room forget something go back and yeah it just you're <laughs> stopping around waking up everyone in yeah, the house basically and i got a message from phil but i had my my, my phone on me i was just listening to a podcast so i looked like left it in the room and it just like looked like i just ignored his message and, <laughs> and just been like carried on i did something more bad i think in in college i drove Jody, back you know you killed a woman but <laughs> we've moved on from it yeah yeah that's that's past yeah, um we've forgiven you yeah <laughs> it's, I, it's our you've job done to five forgive. hours community service <laughs> you're, you're reformed they found a bleached car and a, a, a little piece of lace everyone remembers <laughs> I I drove back home after a party when I probably shouldn't have because I had other things in my system. Um, what and did you have so, in your system? 
jizz. <laughs> yeah. Jody had taken a couple. Of Jody jizz. had taken a couple Viagras. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. the thing is, for Jody to actually get an erection without Viagra, he has to be standing over a dead child. <laughs> oh so, so, so for him, for for so he had taken a couple of Viagras on the excited chance that he would get to have sex with a, a live adult woman. <laughs> yep. But um, it didn't go his way, so he had to drive with a rock hard erection. Yeah, so I drove home and yeah. I was enjoying the music on my radio a bit too much. much. So I, when I got to my house, I didn't feel like getting out the car, I just felt like listening to some more music. Turned it up so loud and just was like listening with my eyes closed, bobbing along. And then I heard a pat, pat, pat on the window with a guy. It was about three, four in the morning, and the guy had to come outside get up from bed in his dressing gown going, turn the fucking music down. Ah, uh, Jesus. Yeah, making friends with my neighbours. <laughs> and what, you were there like, dance, I would actually pay to watch you dance in a car on your own. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what were you just, what sort of music was it? Probably hip hop. Oh, nice. Yeah. What nice gangster rap. Basing. Yeah, probably what was you? Like. What were you into back in the day? Well, that was like 2000, early 2000s, so probably be like Raucous Records, Most Def, Talib mm. Kweli, Farrow Monch, Simon Says, that's nice and loud and heavy. So, mm. Yeah. Nice, I, nice, I nice. I had a car when I was right out of college. I had like a, I don't even remember what car it was. I had some shitty car. And the horn would get stuck sometimes, so it would just go, mm. for like a long time, and you'd have to fucking hit it. And try to stop mm. it from be like just constantly blaring the horn noise. <laughs> and I lived in this like horrific apartment building surrounded by like other apartment buildings. Yeah. And one night when I was asleep, the horn just out of nowhere start like got stuck somehow and started going eh, and woke up the entire neighborhood. Fuck, that's horrible. And I I found a note on my car the next day saying if you don't fix your horn next time it happens i'm going to smash in your windows i mean and fix that, it myself that that feels fair Re very yeah. reasonable <laughs> i was like fair enough <laughs> but at the time when you're like 20 you you assume everyone else's life is kind of like yours like i didn't have any time to get up yeah, like yeah, what's yeah. the big deal but it now, went off at six just lying till 12 yeah, but yeah. now in the grind of life oh yeah it's horrible if you you know you just put your kids to bed you have an hour then you go to sleep and you, you have to your wake factory up at five and, yeah and then there's this horn and it's like th that few hours of lost sleep have will trickle on and ruin your next couple mm. days of your already shitty life yeah yeah definitely I had a Peugeot 106, and I got uh, bullet hole stickers and put them in. And then I took the Wait, exhaust how old off. Were you? <laughs> <I'm 20. laughs> oh no! I thought like 16. No, I was about 17. I passed when I was 17, so it was 17. Bullet hole stickers. Yeah, so it looked like my car had been shot up. In okay. <laughs> Gang-related Devon based accident. <laughs> One of these infamous Devon did gang. Your, did your friends think it was hilarious? Yeah, it was. Like... It was. It was a tongue-in-cheek joke. Yes. Yeah, it was. Um, but I took the exhaust off, so it's just the. So you know, the exhaust is like. I know what an exhaust. Yeah, is. yeah, yeah. Wait, what's an exhaust? <laughs> it's. Uh, it's <laughs> You it's don't even pipe. know what an exhaust it's is. It's the pipe where the vape comes out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> when the car's vaping. Yeah, when the car's vaping. Yeah. But, um, but so it was just, it made the loudest noise. So it was just like, and I probably, I, I thought this is pretty cool. But actually I was just driving through villages, like, you know, ruining everyone's life. <laughs> yeah. Ironically, it would make people want to shoot you and they could hear where you are when you're coming. Yeah. And they'd be yeah. like, oh, someone's already tried it. Yeah. <laughs> tried to shoot them off. <laughs> In the Peugeot 106, used to fill the tank for 40 quid. Those were the days. Uh, I once, um, I was once moving and I was driving one of my, my dad's van mm. and uh, I just wasn't paying attention. I just drove into another car. Yeah. Just drove into a, a truck. Mm -hmm. It was a dad and his child in the truck. Oh, God. And luckily, the car I drove into was the worst car I've ever seen on the road. Mm hmm. Like it was just a pile of shit that was about to break. The man was quite angry as I could have injured his infant yeah, daughter. Yeah, yeah, of course. Which was very reasonable. And I said, uh, oh, I'm, you know, I'm sorry. I'm like, do you want to go through insurance? And he's like, just give me 50 bucks. <laughs> That's great. And I was like, here's your 50 bucks. Yeah, he didn't care. And then um, I told my dad that there was a statue that he had left under the seat and it had rolled under the brake. <laughs> and that's why I couldn't brake. 
and th- that's why the car was dented. And did he believe you? Yeah, so he left the exchange thinking it was his fault. That's good. Feeling guilty. <laughs> it was really good for me. Well, that's all from Cars We've Driven. <laughs> jo- tune in next week. <laughs> we'll be talking about bicycles. <clears throat> I could talk about bicycles, yeah, yeah. actually. Could be a new direction. I once was drunk biking, which is, I think, illegal, but more mm. just a danger to yourself than yeah. others. And uh, I just kept falling off the bike. But I guess I was just at this level of drunk where I didn't have any like sense to stop biking. Mm-hmm. So I'd fall off the bike and hit my face off the ground mm-hmm. and then be like, all right, I'll just get back on the bike. Mm. And every time it happened, I got more and more bloodied. Was this in England? In Toronto. Okay. And eventually I fell off the bike mm. in front of a bar that I frequented for comedy. And uh, my face was just gushing blood. Mm. <laughs> and then I went to the hospital. And uh, I was like, my face is bleeding. And they're like, y- yes. And the nurse is like trying to deal with like stab wounds and yeah, serious yeah. things. And I'm a man with a cut lip who wants to take the attention of a doctor. <laughs> and because I'm so drunk, I'm just not. Again, when you're like 20, you just don't have a sense of like other people. Mm. So when I started bleeding, I was just spitting blood onto the ground. That's not good. And then um, eventually. The doctor, Why didn't you just go home? You well, the doctor, I was I always bleeding. I wanted to see, I, I needed stitches, but I didn't what, get them. What, your lip? Yeah, well, it was a huge cut because okay. my teeth had went through my lip. Oh, God, okay. And, but eventually, the doctor didn't make me a priority mm-hmm. with my cut lip. Mm-hmm. The, the, the stabbed people and the old ladies, they got in before me. So after an hour, I said, you know what? I'm leaving. People get stabbed in Canada. Well, a lot, yeah, and mm. shot, actually. There's a lot of more guns than here. Is there school shootings in Canada? There has been. They're, they're more special than in America mm. when they happen, more remembered. Mm. Fairly hack in America now, isn't it? Yeah, it's like boring. <laughs> God. What year are we going to today, Bobby? So I decided to go to a year, which I wasn't sure if we went to before, but... We don't, we haven't. I looked. Mm. Red, you've just ruined the mystique of you not knowing... <laughs> Why did you ask me? Because you told me what year we were going to do just before we press yes, record. Yes, but then don't ask. Don't say what year oh, are we shit, going to. Oh, yeah, that's bad. Like, you already know the answer. You're ruining. Maybe I used the time machine and uh, went back and listened to this episode. You look like a, a, a mafia <laughs> man who's joined a bowling club. <laughs> yeah. Like, you're, you're, you're like, you know that episode The Sopranos where the, the, the gay... The gay mafia oh, Vito. guy, yeah, yeah, yeah. where Vito goes to that small town and he started a new <laughs> yeah, life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the vibe. Yeah, not the yeah. Well, thank you. The vibe is a secret mobster, <laughs> secret homosexual mobster. No, not even necessarily homosexual. Mm. Just secret. Well, mobster. it's Marks and Spencers. It's it's um, it's nice. It's, it seems nice like a nice bit of gear. A stretchy material. Your stomach isn't hanging out of it, which is a and that's good. It's a rarity for a red I shirt. I saw Jody eyeing it up earlier. Are you thinking of getting your own piece like this, Jody? I hadn't actually noticed until Bobby pointed out what, what you, you just were wearing. I wasn't wearing a shirt. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what I hoped. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, nineteen fifty-seven. Take us away, Bobby. Okay, well, in nineteen fifty-seven, the Soviet Union. Have you heard of these people? Yes. They were Russia. Uh, well, and more countries. And Ukraine. Then. Yeah. Then. What and, else was and there? And others. Well, which countries were actually part of the USSR now? Because there are loads of independent well, ones was it, like, Latvia. It like Latvia, Lithuania, yeah. Estonia. Yeah. I, I think. I'd throw a curveball in there for, for Robbie or Bobby. Egypt. Egypt was in the USSR. <laughs> no. Wales. Wales. <laughs> Wales was in the USSR. That would have been crazy. <laughs> yeah. Would be is what we do is like that bit of the Falklands that's ours over there. So mm. Russia could be like, yeah, Wales that's ours. Would you die for the Falklands, Jody? Um, no, I wouldn't die for the Isle of Wight. No, fucking. Hell. I've been to the Isle of Wight. It's really nice, but I do see it as a separate country. If it and if it was invaded, I would say, yeah, you, you guys can, are on your you own. You can have it. Yeah. Okay. Well, the USSR. So, the Soviet Union announces that Swedish envoy. Ral Rollenberg had died in a Soviet prison on July 17th, 1947. Now, to you, that means nothing. Mm-hmm. To me, it means a lot because I know who Ral Wallenberg is. On 1947, I you but mean 57. In ah. 1957, yeah. they announced Ral Rollenberg, Ral 
Wallenberg yeah. died in 1947. Now, I know what you're thinking. Who's Ral Wallenberg? It's a good question. Who is he? You want me to answer it? Yes, I do. <laughs> I can. Go on. I can answer who is Ral Wal- If you want. Do you want that? Well, we could just leave it <laughs> mysterious and just, we could always, we could just leave everyone to ponder. I can answer the question, though. Okay, I, really, go on, I can. Go on. I can re- no, I can really answer it. Do it then. Say that you want me to. I want you to reveal who Raoul Rollenberg is. What? That's not his name. Wallenberg. What's his middle name? Christopher. Close. Gustav. <laughs> Very close. <laughs> Raoul Gustav Wallenberg mm. was a Swedish architect, businessman, diplomat, a spy, a humanitarian. Oh. He saved thousands of Jews in German-occupied Hungary during the Holocaust, have you heard of it, from German (laughs) Nazis and Hungarian fascists during the later stages of World War II. Yeah. While serving as Sweden's special envoy in Budapest Mm -hmm. between July and December 1944, Wallenberg issued protective passports and sheltered Jews in buildings he declared as Swedish territory. So in other words... Raoul Wallenberg was a fucking great man. Mm -hmm. He put himself on the line. He saved, I think, a few thousand people's lives. He was the Oscar Schindler of Swedish dudes. But on the 17th of January, 1945, during the siege of Budapest, by the Red Army. Now, do you know what the Red Army is? Russian Army. USSR. Yeah. yeah. Same thing. USSR Army. Mm-hmm. Wallenberg was detained by Smirsch. <laughs> by Smirsch? Who's Smirsch? Why do you make everything sound like a child's comic book? He was detained by Smirsch. Smirsch was an umbrella organization for three independent counterintelligence agencies in the Red Army formed in late 1942, but officially announced in 1943. The name Smirsch was coined by Joseph Stalin. (laughs) What army was it, sorry? The Red Army, and then Smirsch is like a... Intelligence wing, the right? USS Army. Yeah, USS yeah. USSR Army. You the know, USS when Army. We're shortening it. They um, when Nazis were fleeing to Argentina or trying to just escape, they'd say to their families, "If it's the Allies, surrender. If it's the Red Army, his cyanide, kill yourself, because it's not worth being alive for what they'll do." I think they would have treated me well. Yeah, maybe Bobby like, and Smirsch. Like Edward Snowden, I'd be, I'd be given a home <laughs> in Moscow. Pamela Anderson would come and visit you. That'd be cool. So he was detained by Smirsch on suspicion of espionage and subsequently disappeared. In 1957, 12 years after his disappearance, he was reported by Soviet authorities to have died of a suspected myocardial infarction. Infarction? A heart attack. A heart attack. Yeah. On July... 17th, 1947, while imprisoned in the Lubyanka, the prison at the headquarters of the NKVD secret police in Moscow. However, the cause and date of death have been disputed ever since, with some people claiming to have encountered men matching Wallenberg's description until the 1980s in Soviet prisons and psychiatric hospitals. So. This great man disappears. No one knows if he died in 45, 44, 47, 4011. <laughs> what does it have to That's do? That's 51. 4011 would be 51. What does it have to do with uh, 57 then? Because in 57, the Soviets finally admitted. I already said this, but you weren't listening. <laughs> the Soviets finally admitted he's dead. Ah. But then is he dead? Is he dead? That's the question. Probably, I assume he is. He could still technically be alive. He was born in 1912, so he would be 111. Fuck. He would be 111 living in Russia secretly. <laughs> um, but, you know, 
there were sightings, you know? Mm. So several former prisoners claimed to have seen Wallenberg after his reported death in 1947. In February 1949, former German Colonel Theodore von Duffving, a prisoner of war, provided statements concerning Wallenberg while in the transit camp in Kirov. While being moved to Vorkuta, Duffving encountered a prisoner dressed in civilian clothes with his own special guard. The prisoner claimed he was a Swedish diplomat and said he was there through a great error. Nazi hunter Wiesenthal. Simon Wiesenthal, yeah. You didn't say his name right I either. Did, yeah. What was it? Wiesenthal. Wiesenthal, exactly. Searched for Wallenberg and collected several testimonies. For example, British businessman Greville Wynn. Why can't anyone have easy names in this story? <laughs> Go. F- just pick somewhere in England when you do your next story. Who was imprisoned in the Lubyanka mm-hmm. prison in 1962 for his connection to KGB defector Oleg Penofsky, stated he had talked to but could not see the face of a man who claimed to be a Swedish diplomat. Efim <sighs> Moshinsky claimed to have seen Wallenberg on Wrangell Island in 1962. An eyewitness asserted she had seen Wallenberg in the 1960s in a Soviet prison where she worked. Where's Wrangell Island? That sounds all right. There's a new island. There's an, I'm not new. Off Iran called Kish Island. Okay. And new to you. New to me. I mean, it's 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 probably been there for thousands of years, <laughs> if not millions. But the Irish cartel on the run, the Kinnahan family, are all hiding out there allegedly. So they're um, it's really easy to launder money there and stuff. So they're thinking it might become the new crime haven. Really? Yeah. But now, so this this crime family are like on the wanted list with America because they've been laundering money in the Middle East, but that money goes to Hezbollah. And so now they're like, well, you're terrorists now. So five million per head on, on each family member. If you, get, if you get them, you get five mil. So they're 15 la- for all three. They're laundering through Hezbollah. Basically, well, the money funds Hezbollah. What they're, what they're pumping in and laundering funds Hezbollah. So now they just fuck with America. And there's like, two years ago, he was Tyson Fury's manager, on t- like appearing on TV at boxing matches in America with Bob Arum, who was Muhammad Ali's promoter and stuff like that. Like, legitimate. The thing is, his people in Ireland will turn on him because yeah. once you're in Iran, you can't then send money. The people in Ireland can't take money from Iran. No. Because that is serious shit. I mean, you can funnel stuff back through Bitcoin and stuff like that. Yeah, but, but... They'll, they'll get you. They'll still get you. And once you do that, then you're accepting, like, terrorist oh, funds. Of course, yeah. So and that's a whole fucking thing He's got Navy own. SEALs on him and stuff. But so his right-hand man, who's like the Silvio Dante of his operation, it's called Liam Byrne, who got arrested last week. His son is going out with Steven Gerrard's daughter. And, and he's Stephen been, Gerrard again? He's like England footballing hero. Fuck. Liverpool hero. Captain of Liverpool. Stayed there uh, for his whole career, despite, you know, being offered to play other places. Like a real, you know, footballing legend. But his daughter's going out with, with this crime boss's you son. think he's indebted to the mob? Well, he appears in videos with Liam Byrne, who's killed fucking, you know, ordered the murders of loads of people. Allegedly. Allegedly. He's on he's been arrested now. So there will be a trial and we'll see. But until yeah, until until he's convicted, allegedly. Fifteen mil for all three. You'd be like, hold on to that one, he's worth a cool five mil. <laughs> but can you imagine that? If someone suddenly puts a five mil bounty on you, you just sort of see the way people start looking at you. <laughs> you know, the guy who's paid to sleep next to your bed with a machine gun, I'd start to question Yeah. Well, Even the, if he's the, on five hundred k a year, yeah. he's like, it'll take me ten years, or I could just yeah. Uh, and I have to is it dead there. or alive? I don't know. I don't know what it is. But there's an old Islamic system of like I can't remember what it's called, but it's about like passing money through things. So they've used that in their um to benefit them to launder cash. But by doing that, they fucked off America. And then when you do that, and you basically go, oh, this person is an international terrorist. You're in big trouble. You know, two years ago, he's like posing for selfies with Tyson Fury, and now he's no one knows where him and his brothers are. I mean, him and his brother and his dad are. Does Fury still name drop him? No, he, Fury's gone. Uh, oh, I'm not close to anyone apart from my wife and kids. You know, <laughs> yeah. I like that. Yeah, yeah. But that's why America say they're terrorists, isn't it? Mm. Because they're withholding their money from them. That's why America goes to war with people because they're not getting money out of people. What do you mean? Are you getting political, Jody? 
Jody's getting political. <laughs> no, that's that's why the, all the Ameri- the Iraq War and stuff happened, but, and that's no, it's close to happen. Same as a naughty bad man. <laughs> <laughs> no, the, all the oil companies, all the oil countries, wanting to change from using the U.S. dollar to using the euro, and when people stop using the U.S. dollar, America's bankrupt. You've been smoking the wacky backy, Jody. <laughs> Jody's been because they're bad guys and we're good guys. It's Jody's, that simple. Wait, <laughs> both of you are idiots. <laughs> Jody's been watching a lot of YouTube videos. Yeah, this, he's gotten done. <laughs> and, and Red has been listening to American propaganda for his entire life. What do you mean? I just I just watch Fox News. <laughs> but yeah, so they... Um, it has the word news in it. It's news. <laughs> no, but the reason is America are not annoyed about the money. They're annoyed where their money's going. That is going to fund Hezbollah. That's what, that's, when you do that, you suddenly become... It's like when Pablo Escobar blew up that plane and had two Americans on it. And they went, okay, enough's enough. You're dead. Yeah. Don't fuck with us. Wrangell Island is an island of the Chakota Anatomous Okrug, Russia. Oh, God, I love that place. It's it's the 91st largest island in the world, (laughs) roughly the size of Crete. It's such a shit fact. <laughs> 91st largest island in the world. Roughly the size of Crete. It's like this podcast. We're the 91st most popular history podcast in the world. Well, I might be happy if that was true. <laughs> I think we're, we're probably the number one comedy history one. I mean, nope. there's, no. There's others. <laughs> Who's, who else is out there? The... the I forget the name. Shit, shit. The, the, no, it's pretty good. <laughs> what is it good? Is that it? one we looked at when we oh, first the started. Dollop. The dollop. Yeah, it's not got the same, you know. Sort of, Never of, heard of it. It's not as loose with the truth as we are, which makes us more fun. <laughs> <laughs> that, well, the thing is, we think we're not loose with the truth. While we're saying it, we believe it is true. Also, ours is very magic. It's also a true crime podcast because every week our producer kills someone else. Yes. <laughs> we just carry on doing yeah. it with him. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we're a po- po- we're a podcast. There's gonna be a podcast about this. Po- Has there been a podcast about a podcast yet? Like a podcast telling the story of a podcast. Didn't you say there was a Joe Rogan Experience Experience? There is a Canadian <laughs> podcast called the Joe Rogan Experience Experience who I believe has more Patreons than we do, and it just dissects episodes of the Joe Rogan Experience. Really fucking hell. That's that's. Sad. I want to do a podcast called the Joe Rogan Experience 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 where we dissect episodes of the Joe Rogan Experience Experience. Yeah, no, we could do that, <laughs> and then so and then do a podcast on top of that. Our our kind of after show would be the Joe Rogan experience, 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 where we talk about the recording of the episode we just did, how we <laughs> felt about sake. it. It's just making me dizzy just <laughs> thinking about it. Have you seen uh, Pink Floyd? Sorry, quickly off topic. Pink Floyd guys arguing on Twitter. The guys, um, Charlie is it Dave Gilmore or Charlie? What's his name? Dave Gilmore, isn't it? Uh, yeah. His wife has been calling out Roger Waters, who's been behaving fairly erratically in the last few weeks. Have you seen all this? No. He's come on stage dressed as a Nazi and he has a machine gun. And for some reason, he's got Anne Frank written behind him on a big screen. Okay. I, I gotta... <laughs> we all make creative choices. Sometimes it's better when rock stars die early. Yeah, I know what you mean. It's like, pick, like they're never going to make any more good music. No, it's weird. They always make like three of the best albums you ever heard, and then you listen to a song. You go, how the fuck could you make this? It's like that Paul McCartney song where he's like, "Queenie Eye, Queenie Eye, I've got the ball." O U T spells out, out. <laughs> he released that about four years ago, and it's the you go, how how the fuck? It's like Richard Pryor just going, knock knock, you know. But it is crazy how comedians I generally get funnier as they get older and musicians write amazing songs when they're 22 and then never again. Mm. It's, never again. It's when people start writing protest songs. That's when you got to worry. Well, not true. Bob Dylan, Bob Dylan, the... Uh, one Young, the... cool. I'm referring to Eric Clapton and Van Morrison's anti-vax okay. tune. Uh, yes. <laughs> well, that's, that's very specific. We've got but, to do something about this, man. <laughs> but Dylan had great protest songs and still created great music after his protest songs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Apparently he's awful live. He doesn't I've seen say him live. I left. Oh really? It was so boring. We left Bob Dylan. I, I well, I saw the Foo Fighters open. It was amazing, and then Bob Dylan was on, and it was just like after about an hour, he was doing none of the old, all of the new. Yeah. Did he have a harmonica? Uh, I mean, I'm sure. And then I was just like, I think I'm gonna. There's, uh, there's something about a harmonica that just you go, I've got to get out of here. You know, <laughs> it's that sort of instrument. It's always played by a complete twat. As in well. a saloon, a harmonica would be amazing. Like if, if you're you a were... cowboy, that's the only way you can play. If you're about to do a shootout, if there's two men about to shoot each other, and you're a little boy with no legs, and you put that's cool. You know, yes, that's the only time a harmonica should ever be used. 
Yeah. Other than that, I've just been there like people in uh, back where home in Tottenham. I remember just this guy once. We were sitting there smoking, and he just pulled out a harmonica and started playing. So that's that's worse than a guitar. At this point, you know, easier to transport though. I get that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, with a, if you have a guitar case on your back and you show up at a party, people are like, "Oh, who's this fucking loser?" Yeah. Where you can sneak in with a harmonica. Oh, no one knows. You know? Nobody. You, just, you whip out and it's in your mouth before anyone can say, "Don't do that, please." <laughs> we'll just listen to Radiohead and get it's high. It's just below beatboxing harmonica, actually. I think. Yeah. And I say Wait. that, I don't say that lightly, because beatboxing is one of the worst I, things a human being can do. I really have a gut feeling that Jody spent years as a beatboxer. Jody? Did you beatbox, Jody? No, no, that's where I draw the line yeah. as well. I'm, <laughs> I'm really into hip-hop, See, but yeah, beatboxing. If you, if no. you beatbox, uh, a, a, a serial killer just said he draws the line at beatboxing. So. Wrangell <laughs> Island, the international date line is therefore displayed. No, I don't know. Oh, that's enough about Wrangell Island. Yeah. Wrangell Island. It's Visit fucking- Wrangell Island. Uh, if you've been to Wrangell Island, write in and tell us what it was like. No one has been. It's the it's a Russian island. So they never found Wallenberg. That was the no. point of the story. Poor Wallenberg. Well, he did a lot of good stuff. Yeah. And um, if he is alive, he could be selling merch. So he should come out and uh, and p- p- profit off of all the good things he did. <laughs> How old would he be now? 110. Oh, on, well, he'd be about 110. Yeah. Yeah, people still kicking yeah. around. Rock and Rollenberg t-shirts. <laughs> no? Print it up. Yeah. So in in 1957, mm. a fire at a home for the elderly mm. in Warrington, Missouri, kills 72 people. Okay. <laughs> what, do you, why, why, what do you want me to say? <laughs> was that global warming as well, Bobby? I'm assuming was that the climate hoax? That was... <laughs> It, that well or did someone leave the kettle on every fire is kind of climate <laughs> change that's, that's a fire. yeah every fire is actually kind of climate change so when because... i put out a cigarette and it is that climate change? well you're changing the climate that is true by lighting the fire you've changed the climate very so... true someone wrote on twitter they're like just for context this fire breathing in is as bad as having six cigarettes i'm like it's no shit is that, <laughs> is that that bad oh, yes no. oh no <laughs> Um, so I'm basically living in a forest fire. This was the original COVID, this fire. Why? Killed 72 old people. <laughs> Fucking hell. Bobby. And also they blamed any death while someone had COVID on COVID. Yeah. As well. Oh, more YouTube. From Jody. Old, old. Jody. No, that's a fact. J- Jody's on the devil's lettuce again. We, <laughs> Jody, those we, are facts. It that's, is true. Yeah. You're right. That is a fact, Jody, Ooh. but I we can tell what your algorithm is giving you based from on doc- what you're saying. <laughs> Was that from Dr. Lawrence Fox by any chance? <laughs> yeah, I saw him in Ruskin Park the other day. I did as well. Not the other day, like six months ago. Mm. He was actually in the pub on my birthday in Camberwell. Yeah. Really? Yeah, celebrating a little with you. pint. Mm. Yeah. I just went up to him and said, you were great in Lewis. <laughs> <laughs> Jody, oh. Jody, do you respect Lawrence Fox? I have no idea who he is and I don't really care anything he does. To no, me. no, fair enough. Fair enough. He was married to Billy Piper. That was pretty good. Yeah, but that apart is. Apart from that. That's yeah. good. He's got kids with her. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome. She's going from strength to strength, apparently thriving. <laughs> so we're led to believe. In 1957, <laughs> yeah. the last person to be executed in, in New Zealand, Walter James Bolton, is hanged at Mount Eden Prison. What did, what did he do? Do you really want to know? Yeah, I actually do. I want to see if he's on the... I'm always against the death penalty because I think... You can't kill someone for killing someone. I'm pro-death penalty, but not for murder. <laughs> for like traffic offenses yeah yeah i think they should just make it for Instead one parking ticket for one home. random thing pick a random thing my thing would be um, people who play music out loud on the phone on the bus yeah without a doubt i had these i look at them and just go, i cannot believe how little humanity you have the, i i think um you know like uh when you're driving mm-hmm. and then a cyclist is on the road mm-hmm and then they, they don't drive on the side. They drive in the middle of the road. Yeah, that, that's terrible. That's so bad. I was in Devon the other Those day people. driving down a country lane, and this guy just was in the middle, and there was a, like 10 cars behind him. And I was just, and he just, it's, it's so weird. It's like, nope, I'm me, and I'm going to stop everyone else. There's a, a weird sort of narcissism to it. 
I think setting off a security alarm in a supermarket or a shop, that's it. I think You're that's done. a fun prank. Yeah? Yeah. How do you set... What do you mean? Like, like if you like accidentally... If you yeah, if you accidentally something. walk out and it goes, beep, 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 yeah, beep, yeah. beep, You think oh. those people should be killed? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I thought you meant people who intentionally smashed the fire alarm as a joke. No, you no, mean... No, no. So alarm. you've never set off a security alarm in a store? I have, yeah. No, I but Jody, then you're, you're saying you should be killed. <laughs> Jody just wants Jesus. to die. <laughs> Jody, I think people who drink water should be killed. <laughs> um, in 1957, right? So Walter James Bolton, he was a New Zealand farmer. Mm -hmm. And he was found guilty of poisoning his wife. Yeah. Yeah. So, oh, no. so he was born in Wanganu and grew up in... Mangamamu. We thought we were safe in New Zealand. <laughs> I know, I know. We're not. <laughs> oh, no, yeah, and that, that would be like the oh, old, and... old places, the locations, and the kind of native yeah. language. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Maori. Yeah. That's he married Beatrice Mabel Jones in 1913. In Wengawuu. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's called Mangamamu. Oh, actually. yeah, good old Mangamamu. <laughs> but Beatrice died on the 11th of July, 1956. After a long and debilitating illness. So they'd been married for 43 years. An autopsy found traces of arsenic in her body. And a police investigation was launched. Bolton was formally charged with her murder. Why did he kill her? Having an affair? Do you really want to know? I have to know. Do you really want to know? Yes, please. Here it comes. Okay. The prosecution claimed that Bolton was having an affair with Beatrice's sister. Oh, so he wanted his wife out of the way. So he could fuck the sister. That's like, um, it's, it's not the same, but there's that, that case going on at the moment. It's like 40 years old. What's it called? It was in Australia. Yeah, that one's done. That guy got convicted. He, he, is he been convicted? Okay. What was it, the podcast about it called? I can't remember. Teacher's Pet. Teacher's Pet, yeah. Uh, and he, and was he got away Cl with it for Chris years. Chris Dawson, he murdered his wife and started dating one of his students who was like 17. Yeah. So I mean, she was a victim too. Yeah. And uh, like three days after his wife disappeared, he started mm. dating his student I mean, and moved her in. If your wife goes missing and you move someone in three days later, I think you did it. Yes. <laughs> This is my new girlfriend. I met her the day after my wife went missing. Missing, not I, like... I was out know. grieving, looking for my wife, and I, she had the most amazing cleavage. <laughs> her sister's name was Florence, mm -hmm. and she had moved in to help look after Beatrice. And they alleged that Bolton had poisoned Beatrice with arsenic. Beatrice. That's his wife. Be Beatrice. Beatrice. Beatrice, is it? B-E-A-T-R-I-C-E. Beatrice. Yeah, Beatrice, okay. The famous Beatrice Potter. <laughs> Beatrice, that's it. Oh, I don't know. No, be it. Beatrice. We, we're not safe with anything. <laughs> <laughs> and they, so Bolton had poisoned his wife with arsenic mm -hmm. he possessed for use on his farm. It was also alleged that he and Florence had destroyed Beatrice's diary. No, <laughs> because she was like, I think my husband's going to kill me. And fuck my sister. <laughs> yeah. And they're like, mm, we should light this on fire. Yeah. Bolton's defense argued that Beatrice could have been poisoned accidentally by arsenic entering the water supply. Mm. Water on Bolton's farm was tested and found to contain arsenic. Ooh. And traces of arsenic were also found in Bolton and one of his daughters. So he, this is not fair. Despite this evidence, a jury quickly found Bolton guilty of murdering his wife. I don't think he did. Why and he was he sentenced to death. The thing is, once you're banging the sis, they're going to assume you killed the sister. You have to be so bad at murder to get caught back then, though, did you? Well, all, our they son, had it so easy. He was hanged at Mount Eden Prison in Auckland on the 18th of February, 1957, age 68. According to a contemporary newspaper account, his execution was allegedly botched. Instead of breaking his neck instantly, he was slowly <laughs> strangled to death. Oh, God. And he could have been innocent. But he probably wasn't. Why did he have arsenic in his body as well, then? Well, maybe... Yeah, there's not real. I don't really have an answer for that. He no. could have not done it, yeah. Unless he went, all right, I need to have an alibi, so I'll have, like, a tiny bit of water, not enough to kill me. Yeah. Poisons the water, gives a tiny bit to his kid, and then goes... Oh, would you, hey, Beatrice, would you like a refreshing pint of water? Yes. To down it in one, like I you know, did earlier before the pod. 
Shortly afterwards, the New Zealand Labour Party won the 1950 New Zealand general election. In effect, the practice of capital punishment ended with Bolton's execution. I think he was wrongly convicted. What's your opinion, Jody? I think he was uh, unlucky. Why? To be, honest, to be to be caught, as you yeah. say, you've got to be pretty bad at it. it was a, those were the good old days. Of yeah, murder. yeah, yeah. You look yeah. back on them as just you guys had it so easy, don't you? Jody? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. That was my like sixty summer back then. <laughs> Jody's summer of love <laughs> before DNA evidence. <laughs> uh. In recent times, there has been speculation as to whether or not Bolton was guilty. Mm. His son, James Bolton, has attempted to clear his father's name. Sherwood Young dealt with the issue in his history of capital punishment in New Zealand in 1998. Now, in January 2001, Investigative Magazine. Do you know what that is? Yeah. What is it? It's an investigative mag- magazine. You've nailed it. It published an article suggesting that Florence, the sister, who committed suicide sometime after the events, was responsible for her sister's Ooh, death. Oh, yeah. And that she had killed others. Oh, fuck. It's claimed that a note existed in which she admitted this, but it was suppressed. So fuck. Florence... It could have been Florence poisoning the whole like family. Sounds like she did, yeah. It sounds like she did. It sounds like she was trying to kill her sister so she could be with the brother-in-law. And then um, it backfired and he got murdered and she didn't come forward. In fact, if you're going to kill yourself, why didn't you she just take the rap? Mm. Maybe she felt guilty. Because now this kid has lost his auntie, his mum, and his dad. And is a body full of arsenic. <laughs> what a life. Uh, he had a couple, he had a couple, because he had a daughter too. Fucking hell. So a daughter. Tough son. times on the farm for that family. Yeah. You think of like a bleak farming movie. If that was a movie, at the beginning of the movie, mm-hmm. it's a happy family. At the end of the movie, there's just two kids and a bunch of dead yeah. adults. What's that new film with Benedict Cumberbatch that came out last year? Power of the Dog or whatever? Yeah, it reminded me of that because that's there's yeah. arsenic poisoning. He poisons his lasso or whatever. I can't remember. One spoiler! Of them. Oh, sorry. Spoiler alert. They've um, had a long time to see it. It's been out for like three years. It looks great. I just found it boring. It is good and boring. Yeah. You go, oh, this is obviously a highbrow movie. But... It's, it's an incredibly well-made, well-acted, mm-hmm. boring movie with a satisfying conclusion Yeah, and is boring. Mm. Looks great. Looks great. The performances are great. The story is great. Oh, I saw something on Twitter, by the way. I, um, I wasn't sure if it was an insult to us. Someone tweeted going, name someone who's intelligent to stupid people. And someone tweeted Ishan Akbar as evidenced by his latest appearance on the Year Is podcast. So are they suggesting that we are I, stupid? I think it's actually the opposite. I think we're stupid to intelligent people. <laughs> I don't think we're <laughs> no, intelligent. <laughs> I don't think no, we're... no, no, no. What he's saying is that Ishan seems intelligent on this podcast because we're so stupid. I get that, I but thought it was the I other think way around. I thought he's saying Ishan's stupid. What? And you can tell that when because he was on the years and he seemed stupid on it. No, Jody. No, no. I think they were going. Who, who, who comes across as clever to stupid people? And I, I, I think it was a dig at us. I, I think we Which are hurt. <laughs> <laughs> but it's kind of fair. <laughs> Yeah, I'm a lot dumber than I thought. This pod's really proved it to me. I also don't think I've learned anything doing this. I forget every week and I go, have I actually got any facts from this podcast? I don't think I have. I think it's making me stupider. Maybe that's something to ask our listeners and viewers. What, what have you learned? Whilst... Have you learned? Well, yeah. yeah, right. What in. have you learned? Yeah. Right. In. Yeah, actually, have you ever been at a dinner party and everyone's talking? You go, well, actually, that happened in 1936. You know why I knew that? The Year Is podcast. I mean, there's a small chance that that's happened. <laughs> a very small chance. Yeah, how has our podcast helped you in real life? Please tell yeah. us. We, yeah. need, we need a reason. Yeah, to carry on. With our lives. <laughs> yeah. I'm so stupid, I don't understand the guy's... What do you person. think it means? As I said, I, I thought the guy was saying that Ishan came across as stupid on the Era's pod. That's all I mm. got from it. I mean, yeah. I remember at one point going, God, you're really actually quite smart. <laughs> <laughs> Well, at least Ben's listening. Thanks a lot, for Ben, for listening yeah, and giving ben, your thanks feedback. For yeah, yeah. Your feedback is uh, hurtful, but <laughs> how pathetic are we that we have to thank someone for listening that insults us? 
<laughs> Maybe he wasn't. Maybe. I, oh, I'm going to kill your wife. I hope your kid dies. <laughs> Thanks think, for listening. I think if the fact that if he has actually called us stupid, the fact that we spent the last five minutes trying to work out whether he's calling us stupid <laughs> really proves his point. <laughs> ben just wants to be seen. You're seen, Ben. Yeah, yeah. Oh, buddy. Well, on that note, a man in that Miami Cruise T-shirt is not <laughs> yeah, stupid. Yeah, there's no way a man. Is it says Miami Cruise. <laughs> Where did you buy it from? I don't even <laughs> know. I think it was probably... Oh, man. It was probably one of those H&M days. Where yeah, like, oh, made by a four-year-old in Panama. He's like, what's a cruise, mummy? Yeah. <sighs> okay. Sad life. Well... On that note, <laughs> let's fuck off till next week. Um, thank you for watching, listening. Thank you to our super geniuses, Spencer. Christopher, Matthew, we love you all. Hey, stick around for the Patreon episode. We've got a, a Patreon trial right now where you can do a trial sign up for seven days so if you're fucking loving this podcast and you want more of it yeah. sign up right now for seven days see what it's like to be a patreon if yeah. you hate it you can cancel if you forget to delete your card details we can get your money <laughs> yeah. try it out just try it out thank you thank Until you so next much week. Until next week bye-bye that was another episode of the year is thank you very much for listening please like and subscribe leave us a review it all helps i'd like to thank our producer jody and also i'd like to thank uh, josh weller for our intro music and song it's uh, it's very catchy it's very nice i'm sure you'll enjoy it at the beginning so big thanks for josh weller he's on instagram at josh weller josh weller follow him and uh, keep spreading the word of the year is thank you so much bye-bye <laughs>